Hi, so uh, in this section, I just want to talk about the different types of leadership styles you can employ as a coach. My, my journey as a coach certainly has been hugely influenced by the understanding in this area. Um, I guess it started when I was a teacher. Um, there's something called the Mostrum Spectrum of teaching, which is different ways in which you can teach um, children from command to what's called reciprocal teaching, where they almost teach themselves. Uh, and um, that was a major step forward for me in my understanding as a, as a teacher. And my um, second big step forward was understanding these leadership styles as a coach. Uh, and I was asked to um, to assess my own leadership style and at the same time uh, gather some feedback from those I was coaching as to whether they agreed. Uh, so in order to explain what I mean is... Uh, the first thing we need to understand is what are the six leadership styles. So what I'm going to do in this section is go through each one of these um, styles and uh, get you to understand um, what they mean, how they're effective, um, and more importantly, when to use them. Because uh, the best coaches use all six in different ways. Um, and it's a bit like, as it says here, unquote, Switch between leadership styles, like selecting golf clubs, they are sensitive to different needs and switch seamlessly. So the one-dimensional coach is directive all the time, or drives pace all the time, um, or is purely affiliative. Um, whereas the great coaches use, use each of these six in different ways and understand when to use them and why to use them, more importantly. Uh, and as I said, I did this exercise as a coach where I was asked to assess via a questionnaire um, which style I was um, in, in comparison to the others and then everyone else assessed um, what they thought about me as, as opposed to what I thought about myself. Um, so it's quite interesting. So for example, um, I had myself down as less visionary than they did. Um, I had myself down also less directive than they did, um, which is quite interesting. So it's a good exercise really uh, and taught me a lot about the way I came across to people. But more importantly, uh, as it says at the bottom, understanding which one to use. So the best scenario is where you sometimes put your arm around the shoulder of a player and uh, uh, and encourage him that way, or sometimes you give him a kick up the backside. And uh, it's it's that's a simple way of looking at it, but it's it's essentially what it means. So let's look at the six styles, and um, like I say, more important, reflect when you go through them whether you are whether you have the capacity to be each one of these six, and whether you are selective in the right way to get the best out of your players. So the first one is visionary. So obviously, as the, as the word says, um, you create a, a dream for the people that you're working for, and you move people towards that, that shared dream. I remember when I took over um, um, my team, Yorkshire Carnegie, or Leeds, Leeds Tykes at the time, um, I talked about the dream of being in the premiership and the dream of playing in front of big crowds and bringing fantastic teams up to Headingley Stadium uh, and I found different creative ways of doing that to engage the players and give them that bigger goal to aim for. Clearly it it is usually positive um, if if you only do visionary style without any substance then people obviously can see through that um, but certainly when you come into an organisation if you paint a vision for the future um, then people will, will drive towards it and you know in my time uh, arriving at Leinster, for example, I would talk about um, winning, winning European Cups and winning Pro 12s uh, and creating a, um, a long-term high-performing team um, within the context of European club rugby. The second style is coaching, which is a really, really strong um, style. And it's the way in which you try and develop people within your organisation. So impact on the client is highly positive. Um, and you basically are setting about improving each and every individual in your organization via one term well, one to one help uh, and uh, make them become a better uh, a better leader a better manager a better coach themselves and um, uh, also you can use that time to connect that person to the organizational goals um, so basically it's it's that time spent improving people in your program uh, on a one to one basis it's something that often gets neglected. Um, because we're so busy, but um, it's absolutely crucial 
um, in your day-to-day -day and week-to-week management of your of the people that you're leading. Uh, affiliative um, creates harmony by uh, connecting people to each other. Um, if I can spell create. Um, uh, impact the climate is positive. To heal rift in a team, motivate during stressful times of strength and connection. So basically, it's where you would, this is the put your arm around the shoulder, create close emotional bonds with the people that work for you, uh, and spend time with them. And uh, uh, it's something that I found quite difficult being a head coach because obviously you're, you're always in that space where you're having to um, sometimes pick a player and sometimes not pick a player. So you want to be close enough to players so they play for you, uh, but not so close that they um, you can't make the difficult decision. Um, and uh, um, let's say a coach, a coach who would be always or a leader always too close to their employees um, would struggle to get the best out of them. But equally, if you're too distant, then I think the same applies also. But it is strong, and it's certainly part of the uh, repertoire that you need. Democratic. Um, Clearly, as the word says, you know, it's, it's, it's getting people's opinion. It's making people in your team feel valued so you can get a consensus, get a point of view. Um, obviously, it's a positive impact on the climate because you're getting people's input. Um, obviously, the downside is it's sometimes the uh, democratic leader uh, can sometimes lack um, direction in his team and his team just sometimes want a decision from, from them, the leader, uh, and they can follow that lead. Um, but it's certainly a, it's certainly a, a strong style. Uh, uh, again, not to be used all the time, but certainly it's part of a part of one of your six styles that's important. Pace session is an interesting one. Um, so it's where you, as the leader, you you challenge your employees or the people that you lead by working at a high tempo, high pace. Um, so you come into a new organisation and you simply change the mindset of the people that you're working. Uh, that, that's working for you and you drive them at a higher pace and a higher tempo uh, and they respond accordingly and it certainly creates a short-term win. Um, often it can be a negative because um, you, you simply wear people out uh, and uh, sending emails at three o'clock in the morning and um, being in the office at five o'clock in the morning, expecting people to be at six o'clock in the morning, um, it's simply not sustainable. It might be sustainable for you, the leader, um, but it definitely won't get the best out of your employees. So um, it is a skill, um, it is important, um, but definitely do not overdo the pace setting. Um, uh, if you're going to send emails, uh, uh, if you're doing emails early in the morning, um, stick them in your draft uh, and send them at more appropriate times so people don't feel under pressure to respond and, uh, and you're never giving people time off uh, and time to recharge your batteries. And then commanding. So fairly obviously this is um, being directive, um, it gives clear direction, um, it can be highly negative, particularly if it's misused, uh, and uh, um, I've seen it happen time and time again where a, a coach or a leader is too directive uh, and uh, it works for a while but ultimately players ultimately tune out to that style because people want to feel part of the, the plan and, and engage in the plan rather than to be told what to do all the time. Um, it does work, though, clearly in an organisation that needs a new start and a turnaround, um, or, or if you've got problem employees, um, commanding can, can be effective because it can move people on uh, or move people into a different mindset uh, when they're stuck in a rut. So there we are. So there are the six. Um, a good exercise would be to have a reflect and think which one you, you most use. Um, and uh, and whether, more importantly, you use all six in different ways uh, and reflect on that. And a second good um, suggestion would be to to get some feedback on to whether um, other people feel the same about, about those styles. Um, but I hope you've understood it, and um, it's a really important part of uh, understanding how to get the best out of people. Uh, I'd put it right up there um, with your credibility, uh, how, learning how to develop your credibility and also those emotional intelligence characteristics that you need to be a great leader.